Welcome everyone in the, I believe, final talk of today, at least in, 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 uh, in this room. And I uh, thank you all for coming because it seems that the program we have is, is very, very interesting. Most of all, we have Chuck here, uh, who has been a, a data scientist at the various companies, as I read, who um, organizes a ton of events all around from EuroPython down to PyData, Global, and, and stuff like that, right? And, uh, and it's even a Python fellow, as, as uh, I mean, Python Software Foundation fellow, as, as, I, as I read uh, in, of, of 2021. 20, uh, um, but on top of all that, uh, she's uh, in developer relations at Anaconda now, and she'll, uh, she'll talk to us about how to use, well, what we, what we can do with PyScript and how that, re uh, that, that can uh, do a revolution with regards to our visualizations. So please, uh, please join me in welcoming Chuck. <laughs> Hello. Um, thank you for coming to this talk. Um, I'm Chuck and um, I'm, this is my first time in this country. It's a beautiful, beautiful city and beautiful country. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so let's talk about PyScript. So um, first of all, before uh, I jump into the talk, uh, so this is my um, show show things. You can find me on Twitter, whatever. And I love people take picture of me and tag me on Twitter. So please do if you can. Um, <laughs> and also the slides is available online. So uh, you can even like get it now live, like, you know, um, see it together with me. So, um, so that's it. And let's get started. And um, before I tell you more, so how many of you already heard about PyScript before coming to this talk? Yeah, you, most of you, which is good. Some of you doesn't put up your hand, so you're at the right place. I'm going to tell you about PyScript. Um, so uh, I'm Chuck. I now work for Anaconda. I was uh, involved in different open source projects in the past. I love open source projects. And I organize events because I love the community. Like Python community is great, so that's why I love going around the world, seeing all of you beautiful people and um, organize uh, some of them as well so people can gather. Um, also, I did a little bit of streaming during the pandemic because I'm not allowed to travel, so which makes me sad, so that's why I moved online for this. But now I can travel again, so yay. Um, so uh, what is PyScript? Um, PyScript, uh, first of all, so uh, people will be like, oh, is it JavaScript, a new thing, like, a, well, it's a framework. Um, so, so what does it mean? Um, I, I can show you later how we use it, but um, basically, to put it simply, we can now run Python applications in the browser. So you may think that, well, we already run Python application in the browser, right? Like, we, we already have some kind of things that we could do that, you know, um, we can use Python, like, for example, some of you heard about Django. We can already use Python to build web things. Like, why do we need that? So um, basically, what make it different is that in the past, Python, you know, you need to have a back end to be able to run the application because Python is not a language that will run purely on the browser, which is, uh, to put it more technically, is not a front end language. Um, so usually, the front end language that, well, you know, it will be JavaScript. So, um, so PyScript is kind of like, you can make Python run in the front end. So, um, it, so, so that's, that's why the name Python script, PyScript. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's how that, that came from. But uh, it's not going to replace JavaScript. Uh, it's, it's just not the, the idea that I'm trying to tell you here that like stop using JavaScript and use PyScript. Um, but rather, like uh, if you are already using JavaScript, it may actually empower you to uh, make your journey to learn PyScript much easier. Um, sometimes, you know, uh, you know, we, we, we work, you know, uh, to build an application. Sometimes we will use both Python and JavaScript. And now you may think of some of the application can be moved uh, to the front end to like use PyScript instead of like running. But, but still, you know, if you want to use JavaScript, you, you can still use together with it. So it's, it's not something that we're trying to stop you doing. So someone is very happy. <laughs> so, um, so, so how, how does it, it work? Like it, it sounds very crazy, right? Like um, I think, all oh, thanks to, um, first of all, like a web assembly is now a, a thing that, you know, uh, make like all the front end languages more powerful than before. Um, so, and also we have a very wonderful project that's called PyODI uh, that uh, basically allow um, all these Python and Python libraries that 
can run, can be interpreted or, yeah, like interpreted into WebAssembly. So for those of you, like I, I know some of you know, but like for those of you who don't know, like Python is a language that uh, if you, for example, uh, download the, the standard Python, you know, the, the C Python, it's actually interpret Python in C language so it can run on your computer. But now because we want to run it on the browser, we need to run it in a language that the browser understand, which is WebAssembly. So, uh, so Pyodai basically act as this uh, almost like a C Python thing that interprets Python to WebAssembly. So now you can run Python on your web browser. Um, so that, that's, that's really good. And also uh, Pyodai, the, the, the team put a lot of effort in making a lot of this uh, Python library available. So a lot of us love Python because there's so many libraries that we love. We use it every day to make our work much easier. Um, you may worry that, oh, do, do, can I still use it? Because like, if I can't use it, I won't use PyScript, right? No, like a lot of them are still, like, uh, are still available because Pyodai like, make them available to be able to use. Uh, for, for those of you who are data scientists, like I was, you know, we use a lot of things like pandas, numpy, um, all these, uh, you know, tools that we uh, manage data with. Now they're available in PyScript and you can um, do this uh, data kind of manipulation, not at the back end, but at the front end. Um, so yeah, well, it's a very new concept, right? Um, how to use it, right? Like, Okay, I want to try, so, so how? Um, I'm gonna show you an example. Uh, so this is the basic, uh, I would say 101 of, of, uh, of PyScript. Uh, so how to, how to install PyScript, right? How to install it? Well, you don't, you don't install it. Uh, you just, for, for those of you who know JavaScript, this is uh, looking a little bit familiar. You just import a script. And actually this is like, the, you can see the extension is .js. So actually this is a, uh, a script that's written uh, I, I do believe uh, I may be wrong, but like, I think it's a TypeScript script. <laughs> so you, you put that in your HTML. So this is an HTML file. So you put that, uh, that script tag, and then with the, so you kind of basically call in this script. That's the PyScript script, <laughs> right? So you call that in, and it allows you to write PyScript. So how to write PyScript? Um, so this is the Python part. This is looking very, very familiar. For well, lots of you, this is basically Python. Um, it's not JavaScript, uh, as you can see. There's no like curly brackets or whatsoever. Um, so this is this is how it looks like when it runs. It all of these are computed by Python. Well, it's like it's computed by this Python script that is in the HTML file. So um, oh, I can't show you this thing without the highlight. Sorry about that. But basically, uh, you will have a uh, PyScript tag. Um, I, I, I will show you later in the other examples because I forgot to like show you the whole thing. Um, so, how does it relevant? Uh, I'm now like assuming that uh, you're here because you need to do data visualization. Um, either you're a data scientist or someone who uh, will be an application that have certain type of like you have to manage the data, do something with the data, and then present it. Um, how, how can these be relevant uh, to you? What makes the difference? What can change your basic, you know, what you did in the past? So, um, so if you visualize data, uh, then with PyScript, that can, you, you now have more options to do uh, more stuff. Uh, for example, uh, you can run some like uh, dynamic visualization I know that, you know, uh, as I'm speaking as a, uh, someone who was a data scientist who was doing this in the past, that usually what I do when I have to um, present some findings to the other parts of the business, I will have to, you know, run my lovely like Python program uh, to, you know, handle the data and like get some findings and stuff. And then I would do the visualization. Uh, either I would do it in a Jupyter notebook and then um, I'll export it uh, as HTML file, because like uh, the visualization tool that I use, for example, Maplelib, it will generate, you can generate an image and then you can put that in your report or uh, something like Bokeh, you can export that into an HTML file and things like that. But now, um, instead of every time you have to export the thing again, you can just have it automatically updated uh, because it is embedded in your 
presentation or where for those of you who have seen my uh, live stream talk yesterday uh, you know I have uh, embedded the visualization in my slide deck uh, so it will you know be automatically updated if I update the data source so um, you, you skip a step <laughs> um, also for, I'm saying like, for example, a map polyp, you know, you generate the image, it's, it's nice, you know, it's fine, but it's not interactive, right? Like now you can make use of the interactiveness of the browser and make it just live update the presentation according to maybe the user input. So this is uh, something that I was struggling to find a good tool uh, for in Python ecosystem. Um, there are multiple tools, but, but uh, none of them really fulfill every use case as flexible enough for, for me to fully customize it. Now you can, um, as long as you don't mind writing some code uh, for the front end, then you can make whatever you want. Um, also, you can uh, share it without installation. Like, uh, for example, in the past, if I want to share my Jupyter Notebook with people, if they don't have Jupyter Notebook, then uh, or they don't even have Python, then, uh, well, it doesn't work on their computer. You have to find a way to host it or maybe bind or something. Then it's not uh, ideal, but now, because everything is, uh, is in the front end, so basically all they need is a uh, browser that already run. Well, of course, if you want it to work offline, you'd need to have the script together with it as well, but assuming that they have internet connection, now people normally will have a browser and have internet connection. So even though that person is not someone who code in Python, doesn't have Python installed, it will still work on their computer. You can still show them uh, the visualization. And also it can be very easily embedded on a web page. Like I said before, you can do all this stuff by setting up a full like full stack application with the back end, doing all this data manipulation in the front end, which is like JavaScript and stuff like doing this. Uh, now it's like let people who are not web developers just like put stuff boom in the in the HTML file and it works. Um, well, it may not be that easy, you still have to learn a little bit of tricks and stuff, but it's, you know, make, make it easier for people who may not want to learn web development and to, to, to build an uh, application properly because they may just want a one page presentation. So this is something that um, could, could change the game. <laughs> so I'm going to um, show you examples of, um, of these things, <laughs> right? So. Uh, so the, the, the plan is, I have three examples, so uh, each one of them will show you a different um, use case or different way you can use PyScript. Uh, by the way, PyScript is still in alpha, so um, I'm building like I'm, I'm building more and more uh, examples and stuff, but sometimes I stumble across some, some issues, either like, you know, any part of the whole thing, right? Like, you know, we use also PyScript, Py out all this stuff. I'm, I'm trying to like now building one more example, but because it's still very new, and then um, if you try it out, I really encourage you to try it out yourself. If you try it out, if you have any new ideas or any stumble upon any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me or reach out to the team, and uh, we are very, very happy to hear your opinion. So, okay, let's look at the first one. First one is, like this, so I, I'll make it a little bit bigger. <laughs> so uh, this is, uh, can, can you recognize what this I'm using here? This looks, because I use the default template, so maybe people look like, oh, this looks familiar. What's this? Uh, this is, yes? Don't know, yes, Maplelib. Yes, that's Maplelib. Um, so yeah, so this is Maplelib, right? So. Um, very simple, but not the best looking one. It's just like this. So what is this doing here? It's uh, basically a list of ice cream. Because <laughs> I love ice cream. So this is uh, all the Ben & Jerry's favorite that I found in a, a, a CSV file that is uh, on cargo. So they have this Ben & Jerry data set, I don't know, <laughs> of ice creams. Um, so they, 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 they have uh, all these uh, different flavors of ice cream. So what I want to do is that I have the CSV. I want to be able to filter it by the ingredients so I can categorize the favor, and then uh, every time I click on it, it would, gen it would give me a new presentation. So for example, I already show a little bit uh, similar thing yesterday, but I would click on, let's say I, I really feel like some something with peanuts in it, right? So I click on it, and then you can see it changes. It's not able to do it in the past, because like this is actually a picture. You can save images. <laughs> so this is actually a picture that uh, Maplelib generated. Um, so, but now with PyScript, because Maplelib is run in the front end, it could be dynamically changed. So let's have a look at the source code here. 
Um, you can see that this is how we write PySquare. We would, of course, have this wonderful script that I've shown you before. Um, so this is just CSS uh, file to make it look nicer, but you can have your own. Um, and then we have some custom tag that is defined in the browser here um, by the PyScript. So this is like py dash end. So this is how you do the import, like you do normally, like you import your library in your Python code. So this is how we do it, because we're using, oh sorry, this is not import, this is supposed to be pip install. So you have to have this in your environment. So uh, this is like installing py, uh, py pandas and um, matplotlib in your uh, environment. So this is py end tag. And then you will need the interactive part. So this part is more like you have to have a little bit of knowledge of like, uh, uh, you know, how HTML could work, but you can easily find this on online. There's lots of tutorial and stuff. So just like these are radio buttons, and I, I use emoji to make it look nicer. Um, and then I need to have a place to display the output. So this is uh, the, the, the part. I, I just give it an ID so I can call it later. So here's the, the heart of the whole thing. This is uh, the, the PyScript tag. So, um, so yes, yeah, someone asked like, oh, why we just don't use script? But I'll explain that later uh, in the Q&A section. But um, yeah, so we need to use the PyScript tag uh, to write Python. So inside this tag, so this, again, it's a pair of tags, just like this. So, so we will close the PyScript somewhere down at the bottom. But, um, so this is Python. So you just import pandas as PD. This is something that some of us are very familiar with. Um, just, you know, all the data scientists just like input pandas as PD, uh, kind of they can do it blindfolded. Um, so this is how we do it, uh, and then in Python. Um, a little bit of a new things that someone want to try using PyScript may have to learn is uh, some, sometimes we need to use some functionality from PyLDI just to make the, uh, so because this is just how the browser work is different from how th uh, the Python uh, work in our computer. So that's why, for example, if I want to open a file, I need to use the open URL thing from PowerDie. Um, also, sometimes we want the interactiveness, so we need to create a proxy, which is a JavaScript proxy. Um, like, because, for example, uh, JavaScript, you have event, listen, learn, all this stuff, but we don't have the equivalent in Python. Um, well, of course, someone can define it with async or whatever, but uh, since we are working now on the browser, we can just create a proxy with uh, PyLDIN and, um, and that would act as an event listener and then you can just like, you know, um, put, put that in and <laughs> um, it will work. So uh, you can find this script uh, if you look at this, if you follow the, the link of the slides and get the slides, then all the links there, you can look at it afterwards. Um, so this is the first example. The second example is that for those of you who have to do a lot of map visualization, um, then this is something that you can see, oh, this looks familiar. This is actually Folium. And because um, there, are, there are tools that we, we all love, right? We want to still be able to use those tools. Uh, Folium is one of them that you may want to keep using. Um, so this is, yeah, this is, this is Folium. And if you look at the source code, this is not so much difference from how you use Folium in Python, right? Again, you have import and then, you know, Pandas, again, pandas. Um, and then this is exactly like how you use it in Python. Um, it's just the only difference is that um, you have to put it in the HTML file. You have to uh, use PyScript to do all this uh, stuff to dress it up. And then, um, and then it works. It just works. So, um, yeah, so uh, it's just a short example to show you that you can still use the libraries that you love to do your uh, uh, geographical um, you know, visualization. So this is the second example. So the last example is an upgrade of this. So this is, well, this is nice, but like, you, you know, this image, you know, everything fell, fell out of the box and stuff. Um, and also when I click on it, it's just, you know, yeah, it just gives me a new picture. It's, it's quite dry. <laughs> so I, I, I kind of like stuff to look nice. So uh, this is not the best. Well, you can still kind of make it, you know, the color change it and the size change it if you're very good at Maplelib, I'm not, so I'm going, to, I'm going to make another example of this. Oh, why? Oh, I think because I make it big, so okay, I'll make it a little bit smaller. So this is a using D3. So now you can import D3 in your Python code. <laughs> wow, <laughs> it was a dream, right? Because um, a lot of us uh, do data visualization. We see how like how much stuff D3 can do, and it's so nice, interactive. All the animation are so cool. Uh, we wish to have that in Python. Um, I know some Python library actually are using V3 as their backbone, um, but 
but I want to be fully able to customize and build my own deep free application, and, and now you can do it. Um, so this one, uh, if you click on things, it would just be more dynamic, and I can size it up a little bit better and stuff. Um, so yeah, so this is nice. So now I can show you how to import D3. So here, again, everything is more or less the same. The only difference is that now I, I can import the D3 library, which is a JavaScript library, into Python. <laughs> yes, um, so any JavaScript library, in theory, you can just import it in Python. Of course, sometimes we stumble across some bugs because it's new, again, so sometimes you find the edge case by importing some libraries that we haven't tested yet. But, uh, but feel free to try. <laughs> um, so uh, now you can import D3, yay. Uh, and then um, all the APIs of D3 are more or less the same. So if you look at any tutorial about D3, I, I just learned like this you know, not so long ago because <laughs> I love D3, but I don't use it enough to be a, uh, you know, a very efficient user, so I still look up things. But you can look up the, the tutorial and stuff, you can still find that this is, you can just use it in Python. You, some of the syntax may change, right? Because Python, we have dictionary like this, you know, um, and then you can't just call the items in the dictionary just like JavaScript does. But, um, but you, it's more or less the same, you select D3, so you have the visualization thing, you add different, uh, the, the, the hoi G, you know, the, which is, I think is access or something, you add, add it there. Um, and then you can also have the transition, which is the animation, so you can still do that. Duration is how long the transition take, I think in seconds or milliseconds or something like that. Um, and then, yeah, there it is, it's just uh, more or less the same thing. Like, you're, if you are familiar with D3, this is, Exactly the same, but the good. What, but why do I care? Right? What, what's the difference? Is that because now I can use it together with pandas? <laughs> I can still have my pandas read CSV, and they are together with the D3 code. In the past, you may have to run pandas separately and then generate a different CSV ready for visualization, or generate it as a JSON file and then put it uh, for D3 to use. So now again, skip a step. We can just use a data frame, a pandas data frame, together with uh, D3 all in the front end, all in one go. So these will all execute it in one go. As, uh, as soon as someone click the button, um, then the event is to kick in and then just change it. Um, so yeah, that's, a, that's how you do it uh, in with the D3. So uh, this is the presentation for the day. Like I said, I'm trying to build more. So um, or if you have new ideas or if you have you know, any, uh, you can try it yourself. Uh, I've seen a lot of nice creation with uh, PyScript uh, up in the internet. Uh, make sure you tag uh, the, the PyScript underscore dev if you have something you want to um, you know, let us know. <laughs> Please let us know. Um, so now uh, there's some Q&A, because uh, this is actually not the first time I gave this talk. So last time there's very, very good questions. So it may be your question, so that's why I go through this. And then if you have more questions, feel free to ask me. So the first question is someone asked, like, can you pull in a Python script? And the answer is yes. Uh, I have done that before, so you can see my examples of what I did. Uh, I, won't, I won't open it right now, but uh, I can just quickly say that, like, uh, you can actually import something here. Uh, in the same directory uh, in the PyM. So you can actually import another script if you want to. Um, so the, the second question is, uh, what is the Python version that we are using? Well, um, th this is uh, because, like I said, PyScript is using PyODI. So, um, and I do believe it's uh, the most recent version of PyODI. So if you want to know, okay, which Python version is using, you have to check what is the latest version of PyODI and what are they using. Um, so, uh, so yeah, like I said, it's different from uh, C Python. So C Python, we know that oh now is like in 3.10 is the latest and then 3.11 is coming out. Um, so for PyODI, again, it's a different thing. It's not C Python, it's not uh, interpreting Python in C, it's interpreting Python in uh, WebAssembly. So you have to check uh, what they're using if you want to make sure that you're aligned with your Python version code. Um, so uh, yeah, so this is the, the question that maybe you have. is like, why I can't just use the script tag? Because like, well, for JavaScript, I just do it like this, right? But why, why I can't use it with, uh, with, with Python, then it becomes PyScript. 
Um, because uh, this uh, script tag is a default tag that is uh, defined in the browser. And right now, um, none of the browser that we are using are commonly using uh, are supporting PyScript because PyScript was just born uh, this year in May. So it's, it's a baby, it's very young, so no one, no one is supporting it yet. Uh, so that's why the work around now is to make a custom tag. Um, so it's, it's gonna be py-script instead of this, someone suggested. Um, so, um, so I hope that answers some of you that have the same question. Um, and then, uh, so why don't you use just uh, just use PyIodi? Because, like I said, we PyScript is uh, is basically having PyIodi as the backbone, so we are standing on top of the shoulder of the giant. Um, but uh, I would make a analogy with like for those of you who are data scientists and uh, you know know machine learning and stuff. Um, there is a, a tool for doing deep learning called TensorFlow. Um, but when I was learning TensorFlow years ago, I discovered something called Keras, which is using TensorFlow as, as the backbone. And, um, but it provides a very much simpler API to use and build a new network with uh, much easier. So you don't have to understand that much of the knowledge of how Tensor work to be able to use to build a new, new network. So it's more or less the same thing. Like with using PyIodi, you still have to understand a lot of like how the uh, front end like browser, the script work, and how you know um, JavaScript. You need to create different things to you know communicate between the Python and the JavaScript and all this stuff. Um, so PyScript just make it easier for anybody who doesn't understand too much about web application to to be able to use it and run Python on the browser. So uh, one of the idea that um, the the PyScript team, that the goal of the PyScript team is to bring Python to people that they, they may not be uh, programmers, they, but they like bring it to the 99%, that's what, that's quote exactly what uh, our CEO Peter said, is like um, to, to bring it to people. So, because like it's kind of skipped the step of like installing Python and you know, and, and then you can start using Python. You can just run it on the browser. So the idea is to make it as simple as possible. So that's why PyScript is, uh, you, you can still use PyRDI if you want to. It may benefit if your use case needed, but um, but PyScript has still got the got the uh, the space uh, that why we need it. So uh, this is all the questions that I've collected last time. So if you have more questions, feel free to ask me after when when they come to this Q and A session. So uh, the last thing I want to tell you is that Pyjamas Con the CFP is open. So uh, so. But those of you who would like to uh, try giving a talk, uh, I mean, standing here actually is quite scary. I, I still feel a little bit scary, even though I've done it many times, uh, but standing here in the new stage. But the pajamas con is gonna be online, so online is a little bit easier. You can do it at your comfort of your home, so you don't have to stand in front of so many people in a new place that you haven't been before. Um, so yeah, uh, CFP is open. Uh, feel free to uh, submit something. Um, if you want to know how to write CFP, again, I'm reachable. Uh, feel free to talk to me. I can give you a few tips if you want. Um, so that's it uh, for me. <laughs> um, so again, this is how you can find me, and all slides are available, and now I think uh, we have quite a lot of time for Q&A, uh, but I would love to hear your questions, um, and I hope I can answer your question. Thank you very much for the very nice talk. So let's start, let's start, let's start right with the first one, or the most awarded one. Um, how does PyScript behave in different browsers? It must be a favorite. Yeah, that's a very, very good question. So um, right now, I think for the, uh, I, I personally use Chrome, and so far everything is fine. Um, then I, then the, the thing is that it will work, um, it will work in um, Firefox as well. But what, what like, so, so it kind of works in like general, generally it works, but the, there was like something that we found actually last time. I, I was sitting in the sprints with the, uh, the maintainer of PyRDyne and then I found a bug. <laughs> so when I'm trying to build something, I was like, oh, I found a bug and then talk with him. He used Firefox and I use uh, Chrome. And the thing is that we both, even though both of us got the same bug and the, but the, uh, how the error was reported is different. So. Very interesting stuff. Uh, the the answer, the, the sole answer is that I don't, I'm not so sure, but generally things kind of work in all kind of different browsers. But the error message is so some, there's a minor thing that's like still, you know, difference, but I haven't found a lot of discrepancy just yet. So, yeah. 
Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, there's another question which says the you know the PyScript.net URL that you put in the HTML file. The the basically the that that probably uh, includes the running of the script. Um, that looks quite generic. So, um, is there a way to refer to specific PyScript versions? This one. Yes, actually, that's a very, very good question. I think we are now trying to think of uh, yeah, different versions and stuff. But right now, there's only one available, and it's the alpha version. You can see it's under the alpha, <laughs> alpha there. Um, so yeah, right now, it's not. But I think, I think the team has some idea of like uh, whether we could have different versions of PyScript. So if people kind of you know, want to stay in the same version, they could stay in the same version. But because it's still in alpha, so I think it's not um, this, the system is not there yet, uh, but uh, I think what it will happen. I'm just saying, uh, like, just like I, my my guess is that it will be like, uh, you know, different script that you can call in. They will be different version. Uh, that's generally the practice with uh, JavaScript as well. So I guess it will be like that. But right now it's in Alpha. It's just like this. <laughs> so, um, um, yeah. But uh, feel free to play with it. I, I mean, like, is you know, uh, you know, take. Take it with a grain of salt because it's in alpha. So <laughs> things are things are still changing very quickly. Uh, but if you want to know more, uh, follow you know uh, the social you know uh, the PyScript social. It's, I think it's Twitter is like PyScript underscore dev something like that. Uh, yeah, and and also you know talk to me, talk to the team uh, if you know anybody who's in the team. So yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. And I want to remind everyone that we are answering questions from Slido. So if you want to ask anything or like upload a question you like specifically, feel free to go to slido.com. Uh, the event code is Python SK. So the next question is like, it's probably also something that you get asked fairly, fairly often. What are the limits of PyScript? So is it inbox or does it have access to whole system? Uh... I guess the question is like the at least the, what I understand uh, it is whether there is some sort of a something being executed on on some host machine and that's probably not the case because it's all executed in the browser, right? So can can do, do you mean that you can host your own uh, script or? The, the question basically asks: Is it sandboxed or does it have access to the whole system? Ah, and so I assume the whole yeah. system access is not there, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't exist. Uh, it all runs in the browser. It all runs in the front end. So uh, so all your coin is like this script, which you can download and like put it locally. If you if you it, it work offline, if you download this script and put it like you know you can you can put it for example in the same directory and then you call it from your same directory and yeah, I think so. <laughs> you can work, you can work offline. You can set up your own. Uh, yeah, so because all all run on the front end, so there's there's no 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 host. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Very you much. can ask another question if it's not your question. So sorry about that. Yeah. Sure, we we still have time, so feel free to send them in. Um, okay, so. Uh, aside from pandas and matplotlib, what are the other like larger libraries that are supported, or is everything supported? Like even like crazy big stuff, like for instance, Torch or, or something. There is a lot of things. So if you go to let's say, uh, I can't. Oh, I can't remember. But because in if you go to the Git, uh, GitHub of Pi I'll Die, uh, then they have a list of projects they have already. Um, uh, available, make it available to use. So if we go to GitHub on, make it bigger. I think they have a list somewhere, somewhere here. And then people are still like always like requesting new libraries as well. So um, and yeah, they do have. Oh, getting started. No uh, build and then document image. Yeah. Uh, do they have a? I, I yeah, maybe I'm just imagining things, but like they do have a list somewhere. Maybe it's not on the readme. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I I can I can if you like. I don't know whether there's like many questions. So if you really want to find the list, I can find it for you later. Just grab me or um, ask me on Twitter. Um, yeah, but it's but there's good. a. Eh? It's a good idea. We don't. We don't have yeah, to go. Yeah, you, you can find the list, but it's it's quite a, quite an extensive list. It's, uh, there's a lot available, and also if you look at the, um, if you look at the issues, there's actually people requesting new libraries every day. So you see, like new package requests and stuff. So if it's if, so if it's not available, just request it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go to the next question, which asks like, how have you used uh, tran transcript, and uh, do you have any opinion on it? Uh, what script? The 
it, it seems to be called transcript. Feel free to take a look uh, up there. Oh, I, I genuinely don't know, so I can't answer this question. I'm so sorry. <laughs> what is transcript? Can you tell me? I, I, I don't know either, but yeah. it seems to, be, <laughs> seems to be something similar. Yeah. <laughs> All right, nice. Um, then the um, uh, next question asks, what batteries are loaded? Like, what else can one import uh, other than um, standard library stuff? So I guess that's, the, that's similar to the, to the previous question we had. There seems to be a lot of packages, uh, right? Yeah, so what batteries are loaded? Uh, so it's, so like, uh, I, I can uh, maybe briefly explain, because if, oh, no. So you, you see this pi n thing, right? So this is uh, if it is an external library that you have to pip install, you have to do this. Um, so the only catch is that if it's not supported by pi l down, you can't put it here and it won't, you know, even if you put it here, it won't work. But because, you know, again, pi down support a lot of things. So most of the time you put it here and it will work just like your pip install. For things that you don't have to pip install, you can just import it. I think I have somewhere that I just import JSON or something. So. Uh, if it's something in the is the stand, standard library, you don't have to put it in the pyenv and then just like import it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we we just got another question that, that's sort of similar. So like right. uh, versions of packages is in the pyenv tag. I, I I guess the versioning is is not happening in here. It's happening on the um uh, on the py uh, uh, on some other level. Yeah. Again, like. Uh, there's no, at least I can't think of a way of pinning the version of the of this environment just yet. I think if you really have to be picky about a specific version you're using, what you can do is to download the view of the the view. So uh, because PyAlda is using the um, micro pip uh, for for the for the packages, so uh, you can basically um, get get the will and something to to pin it. Um, specifically, but um, yeah, but I think uh, if you want to know what version you're you are using on default, you have to check with PyLDI and what they are using, yeah. Cool, thank you very much. Um, then I guess we can uh, we can get back with the, to your very first example where you show the interactive Instagram. So uh, where did that CSV file come from? Oh, the CSV file, very good question. I think that's a very good uh, obs observation as well. So this CSV file, I just host it on GitHub. Uh, the thing is, because uh, a lot of uh, question we got from the internet is that people would be like, oh, I want to uh, load in a local file just like I do with Python. Uh, but the thing is, in browser, you can't load in a local file uh, because if you imagine that is actually quite dangerous because if you just open a random website on your on, on the internet, and it will access your local file, and that's actually dangerous. That's why browser doesn't allow you to do it, except that you kind of manually upload a file or something like that. That's something extra. But normally, you can't just like uh, load in a local file. So um, what I uh, what I do here is to put that host it on the internet. It's kind of yeah. It's, it's like oh why do I have it? but yeah that's, that's that's why because the browser don't allow you to do that um, so I load it on the internet and then I, I you know call it in with this uh, you know open URL tool from PyODI. Uh so what if like oh I don't want to host it on GitHub uh, I want to because is for example it's a very sensitive file I can't put it anywhere on the internet uh, but I still want to try out my app so what you can do is to uh, run a local server and then. Uh, with that, you can kind of make your local file act as if it's hosted somewhere, but it's hosted on your local server, <laughs> so it's still in your computer, and then you can um, do the same thing. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I, I guess the slides have been shown around, so uh, hopefully that won't be a, uh, that finding those won't be a problem. Um, another question: Can you sort of like include uh, Python files in in, in PyScript? Um, uh, I, I guess the question is, can you can you can you do an import, local import, perhaps, or, or, or something like that? And the other one is like, um, are there any issues with HTML characters escaping? Uh, character escaping. Uh, ooh. So yeah, uh, HTML character. That's actually a. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think I would I would treat this as two separate uh, question because, uh, for example, the the loading in an, another like uh, Python script. Actually, I, 
I think I skipped the example, but now since we have time, I will try to show you the example. What I did with loading a local script, so it's something, yeah. So this is this is a, a, another thing that I've done, it's another tutorial thing, but I have, all these are local. <laughs> so this is, this is how you load in a local, uh, local uh, script uh, in uh, PyScript. So you just uh, add the, so the paths and then you add this in. Again, it, if you just like, for example, if you download this repo and then run uh, this HTML, just you know, just, just double click it and run it, it won't work because again, the browser doesn't need, allow you to do this because you're loading in a local file. But how you can do this is to get the repo and then start a local server, then it will work. Um, so, but yeah, if you, if you hosted an, another Python script together with your HTML file, you can basically do this. So we, by doing this, actually, you don't have to put all your Python script in, 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 in one place. You see, this is so much simpler, if, even though I'm doing some machine learning thing, uh, because I put them in the, the Py file. So um, yeah, so you, you, can, you can do that. So the second question is, that, is there any like, HTML um, escaping problem? There is actually something, I think, in the encoding that is fun. If you look at the PyScript uh, repo, there's one issue talk about the HTML encoding thing. Um, there, there is some escape, just like, you know, normal, for example, your, your URL, you know, there, there's some escape for the space and all those stuff. Um, so there are some escaping issue, but generally we just do the same escape thing, but uh, we're still polishing it. <laughs> okay. Cool. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess we have a sort of an interesting question here. So what would this version say in, in, in PyScript? That's something that I want you to try. <laughs> so someone please try it and tweet it and tag me on it. And um, you, uh, what can I give you? With some stickers? I don't know. Uh, maybe a Slack. So yeah, <laughs> maybe <laughs> if you can catch me in a conference. Yes. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Um, so. Uh, how does PyScript sort of make JS code out of out of Python? Is there any translation going on, or uh, or and if if that's the case, is that why Py, PyScript seems to be slow? Yeah, that's a very good question. So uh, yeah, it's it's still a bit slow. Um, it's actually not so so again like PyScript. So PyScript or PyIO actually is interpreting Python in WebAssembly, so it's not JavaScript, even though there's API to kind of convert some JavaScript object into Python object and those kind of things. Um, so uh, the reason, I think most of the reason why it's slow because um, loading in all this uh, library actually takes time. Uh, for example, this one will be quite slow because you see a lot of things. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, again, this is a new technology. So, um, you know, like, well, like let's say Python has been here for a long time, right, for decades, and we are still making Python faster. So <laughs> this is a baby. It's, it's still very, very slow, um, kind of. So uh, you, you can still do some simple visualization of it, but like if you do like heavy lifting things, then it's, uh, you know, if you want it to be fast, uh, it won't be very fast at the moment. Um, but, but like you can deploy a machine learning model with not too much problem. This is actually a machine learning model. That's why there's some pickle here and then, it got deployed, and then it, you have to wait a little bit. You see the loading screen a little bit, but it's not awful, um, awfully slow. That you know, you can make a cup of tea and come back. Load, and it's not that slow. So, uh, yeah. So, so, so again, this in alpha. So take take it with a grain of salt and uh, have fun and try it. Uh, you mean some something are faster than the other? Uh, if you load a lot of things, of course, it won't be fast. Yeah. Awesome. When we also got the the uh, answer to the sys version question, so it seems to be three dot ten dot dot two of of some uh, of, of of some some comments using the well well uh, and even Clang compiled. So so that's that's pretty nice. Thank you very much, the audience. Yeah. Uh, it's very easy to be a moderator for something like that. And, and with that, thank you very much, Chuck, for uh, for your talk. Come uh, look for me for stickers, if, uh, especially for who answered that question. <laughs>
Dá sa programovať veľmi jednoducho a ovládať tak, aby robil presne to, čo chceš. O pár minút sme zvládli rozsvietiť vlastný obrázok na displeji a o chvíľu sme už obrázky diálkovo prepínali druhým mikrobitom. Mikrobit má v sebe aj super vychytávky, ako sú tlačidlá, senzor pohybu, kompas a teplomer. K mikrobitu ale môžeš pripojiť množstvo ďalších vecí. Tu programujeme, aká animácia sa nám má ukázať na LED pásiku. Ja som na ňom naprogramovala dúhu. Teraz programujeme podľa nôd kohútika Jarabého. Najlepšie na mikrobite je, že si viem vytvoriť napríklad blikajúceho robota alebo gitaru, ktorú ovládať tak, že ňou zatraciem alebo futbalovú bránku, kde mi mikrobit počíta, koľko gólov som dala, alebo kúlové svietiace topánky a tisíc z ďalších vecí, ktoré ešte len vymyslím. Mikrobit je hračka, ktorú schováš do dlane a vytvoríš z nej čokoľvek. Tak čo s ňou spravíš ty? Každých 60 sekúnd si 28 tisíc ľudí predplatí službu Netflix. Odošle sa 197 miliónov e-mailov, stiahne sa 414 tisíc aplikácií a ukradne niekoľko tisíc hesiel. Na internete sa toho deje veľa. A všetko najdôležitejšie sa dozviete na Živé SK. Živé SK. Technológie ľudskou rečou.